Okay, so here's A4. A4 should be almost as equally as easy as uh, 8, 2, and 3. But what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the properties of a rhombus, rectangle, and a square, all of which are parallelograms. And so let's just jump right in. We talk about these three shapes. We're talking about parallelograms. So initially, in order to determine if you have a rectangle, rhombus, or a square, you still have to have the same, the initial six properties of a parallelogram right here. That's what these are. So you might, uh, if you want to copy those down, you can, but you still have to have the same six properties of the parallelogram that you need to memorize. It's very important. In addition to that, we know what you already know about a rectangle should be that a rectangle has two parallel sides. It has four 90 degree angles. So what we're going to do is you're going to start to see now that we know it has four right angles. So we're adding more properties to the additional six, to the initial six. The first six are parallelogram properties. The next uh, couple are going to be your what distinguishes them from or what creates them to be a rectangle. So they have four right angles, which you know that. The two diagonals, what does it look like in this picture? What can you tell in this picture? Well, the two diagonals are going to be congruent. And since diagonals bisect each other, you'll know then that those are congruent and all four of those sides are congruent. So our next property that distinguishes this rectangle is that diagonals bisect each other, or diagonals are congruent, excuse me. <clears throat> what do you notice here now? What do you notice about this triangle here and this triangle here? What kind of triangles do you have? Yeah, you have two congruent triangles because of side angle side. And not only are they congruent, but they're isosceles triangles. Okay? What about these triangles? What do you know about these triangles? And these aren't the best drawings, and I apologize. But again, you see the triangle A, uh, the triangle with the AD base and the BC base. Those are also isosceles triangles because of side angle sides are also congruent to one another. So in addition to all the six properties of a parallelogram, the opposite sides being parallel, opposite sides being congruent, consecutive angles supplementary, opposite angles are congruent, diagonals bisect each other, and then one pair of sides are both parallel and congruent, we also know that there's four right angles, that's rectangle, and diagonals are congruent, and last but not least, it has four isosceles triangles. So those are the characteristics of a rectangle that will help you distinguish a rectangle between a rhombus, a square, uh, and it is a parallelogram. All of these that we're going to talk about are parallelograms. Okay, so let's move on to a rhombus. Okay, so here you have a rhombus. It kind of looks like a, a diamond. Somebody asked me what's the difference between a rhombus and a, and a square. Well, you don't necessarily have four right angles now, okay? So let's talk about that. A rhombus, like I said earlier, is a parallelogram, and so it still has the same uh, characteristics of a parallelogram right here, but then it has additional characteristics. Okay, what do you notice? Well, first of all, you still have four congruent sides. That's another characteristics of a parallelogram. I'm sorry, of a rhombus. You have four congruent sides. Okay. What else do you notice? What do you notice about the uh, perpen... I'm sorry, I just said the answer, but what do you notice about the diagonals? Okay, these diagonals here, not that, excuse me. These diagonals here are perpendicular. So that's a characteristic of a rhombus, meaning that, again, these make... 90 degree angles for those of you who have forgotten what perpendicular means. So, in addition to the six properties of a parallelogram, you have four sides are congruent and diagonals are perpendicular. Okay? The other thing that we're going to notice is that diagonals bisect the angles. The diagonals bisect the angles. So if HGF is 60 degrees, it 
if H if angle HGF is equal to 60 degrees, then we know that angle HGI is equal to 30 degrees. Kind of hard to... Okay, so that's another characteristic is that the diagonals bisect angles. And then finally, we have one last characteristic characteristics that's very similar to the last, very similar to the rectangles that deals with our triangles. What can you say about these triangles here? What kind of triangle is that? That's right, it's a right triangle. What about this one? It's also a right triangle, and this one? A right triangle, and this one is also a right triangle. So in addition to the four sides being congruent, the diagonals are perpendicular, and the diagonals bisect angles, we also have four right triangles. All right, let's move on to squares. Okay, our squares still have the six parallelogram properties. And now we're going to add some more. Now this one's going to be a little more interesting. Okay, notice here, on this one, you're going to see there's four right angles. Okay, we know that a square has four right angles. Okay? That's nothing new. Okay, we also know a square has four congruent sides. If we know those two things, we know we have four right angles, four congruent sides, we know we have a triangle, a square, excuse me. But also notice the diagonals. The diagonals are congruent. Notice also the diagonals are perpendicular or can be perpendicular. So if the diagonals are congruent and the diagonals are perpendicular, you also have a square. Look here. Four isosceles triangles. In addition to the fact they're four isosceles triangles. Okay, so not only are they four isosceles triangles, but they're four isosceles right triangles. And the diagonals still bisect, or can still bisect the angles. So bottom line is this. If you have a square, okay, and I, I didn't label this, but if you have a square, then you're going to have the six... Uh, properties of a parallelogram, and then you're going to have, if you notice, here's your properties of what? What is that your properties of? If you go back here, it's your properties of a rectangle, your three properties of a rectangle. And then these properties right here are your four additional properties of a rhombus that you see right here. So the bottom line is this, if you have a square, the square is going to have the six properties of the parallelogram, and then it's going to have at least one property from each of the square, I'm sorry, each of the rectangle or the rhombus. And then generally what happens is you end up having all of these things. So if you can identify four right angles and four congruent sides, and of course you have a uh, square. If you can identify that the diagonals are congruent and the diagonals are perpendicular, or the diagonals are congruent and the diagonals bisect, then you're going to have a square. Or if you identify there's four isosceles triangles and four congruent sides, or four isosceles triangles and four right angles, right triangles, then you're going to have a square. So you have six of those properties, and then you're going to have these properties as well. So if you look at it as a Venn diagram, it may look like something like this. Parallelogram encompasses all of this. Then you have your rhombus. But you have a square that, that is both a rhombus and a rectangle. Okay, so your square has all the properties, or the overlapping properties. The rectangles overlap a little bit with the rhombus, but the parallelogram encompasses all this. So this is just kind of a Venn diagram telling you how it breaks down between rhombus, square, and rectangle. And that's pretty much it. It should be pretty simple. If you have any questions, please feel free to uh, let me know tomorrow morning in tutoring or, after, or during class. Otherwise, have a great night.